So George is home to 16 species of bats. All of them eat insects. And that's probably the thing that most people consider to be really important about them is insect control. Um, they can consume a large number of insects in an evening. A small bat can consume a thousand mosquito sites insects in an hour. So that's a significant insect consumption. And they are, in many cases, important to biological control. They also serve as food for other animals. Often you'll see snakes at the entrance of caves feeding on bats. Also hawks and owls will eat bats as well. And around the world, bats are very important as pollinators. That's one of the big things they do. Certain um, fruits would not be around and other things that we use very often would not be around because of bats, such as mangoes and cloves and bananas, many things that bats pollinate that are important around the world. So as far as bats go, they're important to the economy, they're important to our food source, and just important as a natural resource in general in Georgia. Um, white nose syndrome impacts the bats by causing them to um, die during hibernation. The fungus affects their nose and wing membranes and they appear to wake up too often during hibernation and then die either in the cave or leave the cave searching for food and die in the winter. Um, this causes large numbers of bats to be gone from those cave systems and from the environment on, in general on the landscape in the summertime. So that is a big impact to the areas where these bats have disappeared. Um, it's a big concern. It's impacting a lot of bats. Over a million bats are estimated to have died so far. White nose syndrome was first documented in New York in 2006. It was reported that some bats were flying around on the landscape, dying, crashing into snowbanks in the middle of the winter. That's kind of an odd report, obviously. And some researchers went into the caves and discovered these bats with white noses. At first they thought maybe it was just really limited to that cave and something strange they hadn't seen before. Fungus will grow on dead bats in caves, we've seen that in the past, but not usually on living bats that are hibernating. And it quickly spread out from 2006 into other areas of New York and has now spread all the way into um, as far south as Tennessee and as far west as Missouri and Oklahoma. We expect white nose syndrome to arrive in Georgia eventually. We're not sure if it will be this winter or sometime in the future. Georgia DNR has planned for white nose for the last couple of years. We developed a plan just this spring that covers what we'll do before we find white nose, which is currently basically trying to get as much information about our bats as possible, educate the public as much as possible, work with the caving community when we can, and to really get an outline for what we're going to do when white nose is found. We have a system for who's, who you should report it to if you have any incidents where you think there might be bats that have white nose syndrome, where you should submit bats when you find one that you think might be impacted, and what our response will be once we find white nose syndrome and what we'll do after that. So it basically covers before and after, and it's really heavy on education of the public and kind of the protocol for what we're going to do when it's found. The biggest thing that the general public and the caving community can do is to stay out of caves while we're trying to figure out what's happening with white nose syndrome. We're not sure if people are moving it or not, but there have been large jumps in the syndrome that appear that it may have been moved by people. Um, we know that the only way to prevent people from moving it is to not go into caves. That's really the main thing that people can do. Also to educate others about bats in general and why they're important and about white nose syndrome, what it's doing to the bats and how you can prevent spreading it. If you are going into caves, we really, everyone should be decontaminating. We're really stressing decontamination. The Fish and Wildlife Service has protocols for decontamination. They're included in our plan and there are links to them on our website. So that's really important if you are going into caves or handling bats in any way. Researchers need to disinfect when they're doing work. Also, nuisance wildlife control operators should be disinfecting when they're handling bats, moving them out of people's houses or anything like that. Georgia DNR has developed a white nose syndrome response plan. It's based on plans from other states around the southeast especially. It really talks about what we plan to do before white nose gets here, which is now, and after white nose arrives in Georgia. 
The plan includes things like um, how we can educate the public about white nose syndrome, what we can do to prevent it from spreading, such as decontaminating before going into caves or not going into caves at all. Cave closures are a consideration. The Fish and Wildlife Service has recommended that all states that are infected with white nose syndrome and the states adjacent to those should close their caves to caving or any kind of activity in caves with limited entrance for scientific activities. And Georgia is considering cave closures and um, may indeed close caves. They would, we would prevent entry on state lands and post that the caves are closed for a limited amount of time to kind of slow the spread of white nose in Georgia. We know that closing caves are not going to prevent white nose from spreading, but it may help slow that if cavers and recreational users are spreading white nose syndrome. The plan also includes what to do after if someone finds a bat that may be impacted by white nose syndrome, how to submit it. We are submitting everything to um, the UGA Squidus Lab, which is a lab that does diagnostics and has the ability to tell whether the bats are infected with white nose or have died for another reason. We also have a big component about um, education and monitoring after and before. We want to monitor the caves. In this winter we went into a couple of caves and counted the bats and tried to see if we could tell if any of them looked like they may have white nose. We didn't see any signs of it, but we did get some good counts at Hibernacula. We plan to do the same thing next winter with help from the caving community to even identify maybe more winter hibernacula that we didn't count before and also as an early diagnostic tool to try to figure out when white nose arrives if we can if we can find it right away and identify it so that we know that we have it.